Okay, included with the kit, let me zoom in here a little bit better, are these uh, adapters, servo arm adapters that they include. And what that does is it gives you the exact same spacing uh, on the servo as you have at the bell cranks. Um, I, I use them, I like them, they, they work out relatively well. Like I said, it gives you the good spacing, it gives you a nice, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, travel range for the swash plate and your cyclic and everything. So, so far I thought they've worked out well. To mount these plates to the uh, servo, they, you use a round servo horn and they give you two screws that you screw down and screw into the servo horn. Now some people didn't like that so they were going to, they put one to put four screws in there. That's fine. Um, what I do in lieu of that is I just, I put a nice coating of uh, CA on the front of the servo horn before I tighten everything down. Now when you do this, the servo balls go on the back side they're not sticking out, they're between the servo arm and the frame. So make sure you get that right when you put your arms on there. And then uh, after you get those put together, then you can go ahead and you know start getting everything lined up on your, uh, with your radio, you know, plug your servos in, find your centers and you know, get everything kind of centered up. Um, one nice little trick that you can use to make sure that you gotta, well, we'll go over that later. All right, um, I'm at the point now where I'm getting ready to mount the uh, servo adapter plates onto the servo horn here. And I just wanted to show you this nice little tip and it makes it a little easier for lining stuff up. Like I said, you're gonna use the round horns. Um, I've got black marks on here because uh, I'm gonna have to trim mine down just a little bit because they're a little bit too big, which is really not that big a deal here. But what you can do is, you know, you've got uh, 90 degree holes here here. Alright, we got the servo adapter plates the, on the uh, servo wheels now. A um, little tip here for when you're trying to get all this stuff centered up. You can use these screw points to, uh, you know, these two points through to the, the bell cranks mounting point to get make sure your servo is centered up. That you can do it there and you can also do from uh, when you're doing the bell crank, you can go across these centers, the center of these screws, and then make sure your bell crank's lined up straight. So that's it, it's a nice and easy way to help get everything nice and squared and 90 degrees, and that way you'll get all your even throws. So now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and build up the links <clears throat> for the bell, the bell cranks and everything. So uh, go ahead and get your bag out with all the uh, ball links and the rods and everything, and. Uh, We'll go ahead and get those built up. Now when you do this, the key here is you can start with the measurements in the manual. They're going to be close, but they're not going to, it's just going to depend on different servos. And they're, all servos aren't made the same, so output shafts may be over just a little bit further than other ones. But the key is when you're doing these bell cranks to start out with the rods at the same length and never change one rod without changing the other rod. So if you know, you're too short, or whatever, make sure you're lengthening both rods at the same time or shortening both rods at the same time. That'll ensure that you, you have even throws and everything squared up in parallel and, and whatnot. So, you know, so make sure you start out with them even, you know, use these points to get everything squared up and uh, when we come back, we'll have the bell cranks on and we'll be able to move on to the next step. Okay, now I've gone ahead and installed all the servo horns We've got the uh, links all set up. Everything's set up to be parallel and squared, so we got level swash plate throughout the travel now. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. One thing that you want to keep in mind is that the uh, elevator is going to be your key on this. You know, any it's going to determine your center and it's so your center swash. So get that one leveled up and then level everything up to that, and then check your ranges up and through the motion. Um, like I said, you know, two screws, I C8ed it in there. Um, everything's ready to go. Um, still got to do the throttle link yet. And uh, the next thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to go ahead and set the tail link rod up, get it built, and get it together. So we'll get those parts out here, and we'll carry on with that. Okay, next up, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to mount the electronics, the CDI, the receiver, gyro, 
and get the batteries position wired up and everything get all the servos run back and plugged into the receiver um, I did make you'll see I probably you can probably see I made a couple modifications I dremeled these out and put some rubber across there so I can bring wires up through for the servos and stuff like that and I I actually take the gyro plate off of the tail and mount it up here on the front to mount my receiver on. That way I get the gyro and the receiver and everything's up here in the front underneath the canopy. I'm a little more protected rather than being back behind on the tail. Um, just a personal preference thing. But uh, like I said, we'll go ahead now and uh, get the electronics mounted, receiver, whole nine yards, and then uh, we'll move on from there. All right, well, I got most of my electronics installed now. Um, couple of things we want to look at here. Um, there's a ground wire that comes off of the uh, Zenoa CDI that you need to make sure you get onto the engine block so it's got a ground going back. Um, this is my RevMax or Spectrum AR7100 backplate sensor that I wired up and just ran it across here. The wires come in here for the uh, CDI spark plug and the sensor wire and everything like that. Still haven't hooked up the throttle yet. We're going to do that in the next step. Um, all the uh, servos are mounted. Here's my uh, gyro. Here's the receiver. Like I said, here's the CDI. And then I'm going to end up putting my batteries back into here. That's how I like to do it. That way I can get them in and out without I'm taking the canopy off. So now we're ready to, we're going to go ahead and mount the carburetor up. Um, then set up the throttle, throttle linkages and all that fun stuff and, uh, and we'll also install the, uh, the clunk line and everything for the uh, fuel tank. 